Good evening, family. Join me so that we can begin tonight's prayer by the grace of the Lord. I think it's going to be one impeccable moment in the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the King. We are about to be so greatly blessed, so greatly transformed on tonight. And we're going to be as effective as we possibly can be by the grace of the Lord. So join me quickly as we spend this incredible moment in the presence of the Lord, as we spend this incredible moment in seeking the Father. Come on, I'm waiting on you, family. Let's get started so we can sincerely pray. God says, I'm looking for a people who will seek my face and people who will seek my face. A people who will seek my face. So come on in, come on in so we can pray. Come on in so we can spend some time in truly seeking God because I know that there's going to be a great miracle for someone. Good, great evening to you. Come on in, my friend. Come on in. I know that there's going to be an incredible moment that we're going to spend with God here tonight. So get somebody on here and let them know hey, we're beginning prayer. I'm ready to be blessed. I'm ready for a, a spoken word from the Holy Spirit, but also I'm ready for my spirit to be revived. I'm ready for my soul to be transformed. I'm ready for my spirit man to be renewed. I'm ready to be touched by the Lord. Good evening to you. Great evening. It's good to see you. I'm ready to be touched by the Lord. I'm ready to be healed by God. I'm ready for a second touch from the Holy Spirit. So come on in quickly so that we can begin our prayer on tonight. I'm going to give you 10 more seconds to just share the stream and let somebody know that we are live right now and that we are about to be greatly blessed in Jesus' name. In fact, at this moment, Holy Spirit, I'm just giving you the atmosphere, Holy Ghost. I'm giving you this moment. I'm asking for you to sanctify this moment I'm asking for you to purify this moment, Holy Spirit. I'm asking for you to wash this moment, to cleanse this entire moment that we are about to spend in your face. God, I love that you are omnipresent because nothing can hinder you from performing a miracle. I love that you're omnipresent because nothing can hinder you from touching lives. I love that you are present and omnipresent because your omnipresence allows you to touch us no matter what we're in, no matter where we're in. And in fact, no matter what we are in, so right now, Holy Spirit, because of your magnificence, I'm asking you in Jesus' name to reach our hearts tonight as only you can do. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you in Jesus' name that you will transform our being, that you will renew our entire lives by the blood of the Lamb. I'm asking you in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, that you will fulfill your will in the lives of each person in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm asking that this moment will be exactly what someone needed, not just to get through life, but let this moment be exactly what someone needed to be delivered, God. Because we do not believe that you are a God who will allow us, Heavenly Father, to remain in the same flow of life and to just receive what we needed in order to stay, oh God, in our oppression, but you are a God who allows us to receive what we need in order to move forward with you. So Father, by the blood of the Lamb of God, I'm asking for you to liberate somebody on tonight. Lord, I'm asking for you to transform someone's life tonight, to liberate their mind on tonight, even to liberate their mindset, their perspective on life, their perspective on you, and their perspective concerning their ability to trust in you, God. Allow someone on tonight to trust in you so well the miracles have no other choice but to happen for them in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm asking that somebody's heart on tonight will be prepared uh, in spite of the chaos of their day, in spite of the chaos of their week, uh, in spite of what they may have encountered throughout the week. Lord, I pray today in Jesus' name that this will be the moment where a miracle will happen for someone, that by the blood of the Lamb of God, this will be the moment what transformation and restoration will happen for someone on tonight. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you will liberate someone on tonight, that you will heal someone on tonight, that you will transform somebody on tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in our midst. We welcome your presence, your might, your power, and your anointing in our midst. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will renew, that you will touch, oh God, that you will restore, and that you will sanctify even the stream, God, that you will 
will sanctify everyone listening and watching, God. That you will purify every single one of us, God, by the blood of the Lamb of God. La prosata la mashaya made. Le prosaka tala ma. Holy Spirit in Jesus name uh, sanctify the cords of our lives uh, sanctify even the cores uh, and of, of our lives sanctify even the values of our lives oh God sanctify the decisions of our lives uh, and purify every single person on this moment God we ask that the blood of Jesus Christ um, will cleanse even the mind the Lord is showing me that a lot of people are struggling in their mind uh, you're struggling in your mind uh, and even in your ability to make decisions, uh, you're having a hard time making decisions because uh, you're struggling in the battlefield of your mind. Uh. So tonight, Lord, I pray that the word of God that says uh, that you will keep in perfect peace those whose mind are stayed on you. Uh. Lord, I pray tonight in Jesus' name that you will liberate their minds, uh, that you will sanctify their mind, that you will cleanse, uh, purify, wash, and deliver, oh God, someone's mind on tonight. Uh, by the blood of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we repent for every sin in this place, God, that, may, can, that could hinder someone from receiving what it is that you're getting ready to give unto them, and we sanctify them, we wash them, we cleanse them by the blood of Jesus, and we speak forth a greater des destiny, a greater outcome, and a greater deliverance like never seen before in Jesus' mighty name. Manto Rapa Palama. Oh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you on tonight. Uh, we ask for you to have your way on tonight. We ask for you to minister as only you can minister. We ask for you to cleanse as only you can cleanse, oh God. And we ask for you to heal like only you can heal. Oh my God, Lord, I thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Because even as I'm praying, I see someone weeping bitterly. You're weeping very, very bitterly right now in that room that you're in. And you're seeking God and you're crying. You're crying because of two reasons. One, you're crying because you feel as though you've made a mistake or most of your life is a mistake. And two, you're crying before because even right now, you can sense the compassion of God upon your life. You can sense the mercy mercy of God upon your life. Uh, and God said, it is not over. Everyone has their process, uh, but it is not over. The reason you're weeping so bitterly, the reason you cry now to me so much uh, is because the process has been so difficult for you. But God says, don't you fear a thing. Uh, I am in control of your life and I will rescue your life in Jesus mighty name. Uh, oh my God. Uh, Holy Father, Holy Spirit, uh, we ask for you to have your way on tonight in Jesus' name. Uh, we ask for you to liberate our lives on tonight in Jesus' name. Uh, we ask for you to touch that very person whose heart and life you are already touching, God. Uh, to that person, God, that's already weeping before you. To that person who's already seeking you to that person who's already crying out for mercy on tonight uh, Lord I pray in Jesus name uh, that you will begin to touch them already by the blood of the Lamb uh, Lord I pray uh, that you will begin to heal them already by the blood of Jesus um, Lord I pray uh, that you will begin to transform them already by the blood of the Lamb uh, prepare their heart oh God uh, prepare their soul oh God to seek you uh, and to move past the flesh uh, because we will see you God uh, when we move past our flesh oh God uh, we will know you God, when we break past the flesh, oh Heavenly Father, we will meet you, oh God. When we get rid of ourselves, oh God, when the layers of our flesh uh, begin to fall off of us, oh God, um, then we will finally tap into the spirit. Uh. The Bible says that the Father seeks for worshipers uh, who will worship him in spirit and in truth, oh God. Uh. In order for us to worship you in spirit and in truth, uh, the layers of the flesh have got to fall. Uh. The layers of doubt have got to fall. Uh. The layers of oppression have got to fall. Uh. The layers of depression have got to fall. Uh. And the layers of defeat uh, have got to fall. Uh. Today I pray that the layers of the flesh uh, will fall off of somebody. Uh. Today I pray, oh God, that in Jesus' name, uh, the layers, oh so God, uh, of opposition will fall off of somebody's life. Uh. Today I pray in Jesus' name uh, that the layers, oh God, uh, of opposition will fall uh, off of somebody's life tonight uh, by the blood of Jesus. Salamada, so that they will finally tap uh, into the round that you're calling them to tap into. Uh, so that they will finally tap, oh God, into that place of peace uh, where our hearts are connected, oh God. Oh 
oh God, where the deep calls unto the deep, oh God, uh, at the sound of your waterfalls, uh, that is you, precious Jesus. Uh, we pray on tonight, God, that you will minister to somebody until their fall, until their flesh uh, falls off of them in Jesus' name. Uh, we pray on tonight that you will minister unto somebody, God, until their flesh, oh God, uh, falls off of them by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, I pray, God, that you will minister unto someone uh, until depression falls off of them. Uh, I pray, God, that you will minister to someone uh, until the feet of God uh, and even the spirit of heaviness uh, will fall off of them by the blood of Jesus. Uh, I pray, God, that you will minister unto someone uh, until all of their walls uh, are sanctified uh, by the blood of Jesus. Holy Ghost, we come before you, God. Uh, because everything God will ever do, uh, he will always do it through you, Holy Spirit. Uh, every miracle Jesus will ever do, uh, he will always do it by your power. Uh, everything he will always do, uh, he will always do it through his Holy Spirit. Uh, the Bible says it's not by might, uh, no, it's by power, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord. Uh, oh, Holy Spirit, it's not by the power of our flesh. It's not by the power of our might. It's by the power of your spirit. So in Jesus' name, liberate the atmosphere. And liberate somebody's life tonight. Transform someone's calling on tonight, oh God. Renew somebody's anointing on tonight. Liberate, liberate and sanctify this moment. Wash this moment and cleanse this moment for the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Anybody excited to be on here tonight? Let me see a hand really quickly. My God, my God, my God. If you are excited to be here, let me see your head really quickly. Do me a favor and share the stream. We're not going to be selfish on tonight. You need somebody to hear this just as well as you are wanting to hear a word from the Lord. You need somebody to be blessed on tonight just as well as you're going to be blessed on tonight. So in the name of Jesus, let's share the stream so that somebody tonight can be greatly blessed. Let's share the stream so that somebody on tonight can be greatly transformed. Share this moment so that somebody will be blessed because I believe that this prayer is going to make a difference in your family's life. This prayer is going to make a difference in your family's life. Manko rapa pasatele mede. This prayer is going to make a difference in the lives of, of your family members as well. So share the stream ASAP. Let somebody know that we are on. We are about to pray. We are about to go higher. We are about to be cleansed by the blood. We are about to be sanctified by the blood. We are about to be washed by the blood of the Lamb of God. Let somebody know tonight that prayer is beginning. No wasting time. I'm trying to get settled here in my audios and things of that nature and on other arenas as well. But I'm so excited for how we're going to be praying on tonight. This is going to be life-changing. We've been seeing a flow of so many miracles. Some of these miracles, to be quite honest with you, we have not been able to share just because they are that, um, that private and things of that nature. And I know that there are many of us watching and listening on tonight who have gotten similar miracles as well. And so tonight, we're going to continue the flow by the grace of the Lord. And we're going to watch God bless us as only he can do in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, share the stream because i got to talk to you about something so important. But we're going to turn this into a prayer so that your entire life will be delivered. So that your entire life will be healed. So that your entire life will be sanctified by the blood of the Lamb of God. God has been speaking to us a whole lot uh, concerning a lot of prophetic things that are getting ready to happen all around the body of Christ that are really, really, really going to change things around. So this is why tonight we're going to pray that you remain on the God's prophetic agenda. We're going to pray that you remain on the God's mighty power, that your family will be covered, whether it be concerning the coming famine, whether it be concerning any coming troubles, that you will be fully protected by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Someone in our midst, God is ministering to me about you. Uh, give me one second here. I'm getting settled on my last manner here and I'm good to go by the grace of the Lord. But you're listening to me and you have been writing a book. You have been writing a book. This could have been something maybe for about 
a lot of months now, maybe 12, 13 months, and it's been a long time, but you have not yet published it. You have not yet actually written it. In fact, there are some parts of it that are not completed and you're very slow for when it comes to obeying God. God is speaking to me to tell you to do the will of God. That's what he's showing me now. He's speaking to me to tell you to do the will of God. So I know, I know, I know that you're on here in our midst. So do the precious will of God in Jesus' name. I feel led to pray for a few more minutes tonight. This is what I feel led to do, and this is what we're going to do. I want you to ask God to do something with you that no one else can do. I want you to ask God to sanctify your entire life. I want you to ask God to restore you. I want you to ask God to heal your heart. What Right now at this moment, I'm asking you to pray, especially if you are an intercessor. I'm asking for you to pray because I know that God wants to heal tonight. I know that God wants to give someone a testimony on tonight. But I do not sense that all of our spirit men are in the same dimension at this moment. You hear what I'm saying? So I'm going to give you one more minute to fully pray and say, God, touch my life. Because I feel as though you're coming off from so much. Your flesh is coming off of so much. There's so much still stuck on your subconscious that you're not fully prepared to pray. You're not fully prepared to even receive. Your spirit is not prepared. You're very fleshly right now. In fact, you're very emotional right now. So I'm going to ask you to pray once more. Ask the Father of the harvest to sanctify you, to wash you. Say, God, cleanse my entire being. God, purify me so that as we begin to pray on tonight, I can receive the deliverance that I need to receive. I can receive the transformation that I need to receive. In Jesus' name, come on, pray with me once more. Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, I'm really asking on tonight that you will actually prepare someone, oh God. I know, Heavenly Father, that you are not a God of quick, Heavenly Father, God, uh, or of rushed prayers, God. You're not one God that we get to rush uh, so that we can move on in our schedule. You're not a God that we get to rush, oh God. Your miracle, oh Heavenly Father, God, uh, takes place, Heavenly Father, when we learn to tarry in your presence. Uh, our tearing in your presence is not us over-talking. The Bible says, do not pray like the Pharisees are. Uh, who uh, multiply their words by saying the same thing. No, 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 because your Father God already knows what you are in need of. Uh, our tearing in the Spirit is not us overly talking. Our tearing in the Spirit is us spiritually waiting on you. That is us seeking you. Our tearing in the Spirit is us seeking the Lord. Uh, when we tarry in the Spirit, we are seeking God. Uh, so Lord, on tonight, I'm asking you, God, uh, to allow someone to seek you accordingly by the blood of Jesus. Uh, may every layer of the flesh actually fall off of them. If there are layers of the flesh, layers of lust, layers of opposition, layers of oppression in their heart, God, <laughs> remove it by the blood of Jesus. If there are layers of depression that is hunting somebody on tonight, Lord, I pray right now by the blood of Jesus that you will remove that from them in Jesus' name. If there be layers of opposition in somebody's life, my God, Remove it in Jesus' mighty name. I take it that there are a few people who are actually praying. There has to be a few people. There has to be at least four people listening right now who are actually interceding because the Lord has begun to speak to me. And I saw someone you having... It has to be a condition that the doctors have already called. It has to be some form of arthritis, but they're saying it's in the fingers. You, you visited a doctor. You visited a doctor. It had to be this very month that we're in. You visited a doctor and they're saying it has something to do with arthritis in the fingers. Is what they're wanting to say, but you are still not receiving it. I need you to pray, say God, remove the layers of the flesh. Bind every yoke of the enemy. Bind every oppression. Bind every attack of witchcraft. Bind every sorcery. Bind every delay. Bind every yoke. Bind it. Bind it and bind it by the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, the divinity of God will give you this moment. We wash this moment by the blood of the Lamb. We cleanse it. We cleanse it. My God, Holy Spirit is here. But I do not sense that everybody is on the same level right now. And when I say same, le same level, I am not just asking you uh, to be on the same spiritual level as other believers. Uh, I'm just asking you right now to be one with the Lord, uh, to be in prayer, to be seeking God uh, so that he will reveal himself to you. Man, <laughs> 
Karubo Sakaria Mashatemende, Mandu Rapa Sukatalama, Repa Karia Basunto Lobo Shiamama. Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name, renew, transform, deliver, sanctify, wash, and purify, cleanse this moment, liberate this moment, heal this moment, God, transform, oh God, this moment, God. Manko Robo I want to hear the believers pray on tonight. I want to hear intercessors pray on tonight. I want to hear anyone who's ever experienced the power of God through prayer. Man ka rebo shaya to pray and say, speak to me, Lord. I am available to you, God. I am available to you, God. Speak to me, God. Speak to my soul. Speak to my spirit. Speak to my mind. Speak to my future. I am available unto you. I am available to you, God. Speak to me in Jesus' mighty name. Manko Talama. I know that we live in a generation. Huh? And in an era of quick things, uh, we like to rush everything and we like to rush everybody. We even like to rush marriage and we even like to rush God. Unfortunately, we like to get quickly to the miracle. But you don't realize uh, that if you're going to experience a miracle from God, you're going to have to learn to wait on God spiritually. Waiting is not physical. Waiting is spiritual. If God is going to perform a miracle in your life, he's going to have to break the flesh off of you. Oh, my God. Who am I talking to on today? We serve. Oh, my God. A God who loves to break the flesh. Because the miracles that he gives. Oh, my God. He's not giving it. Oh, my So that they can be ruined by your flesh. He's giving you the miracle. Oh, my God. So that they can push you toward purpose. Oh, Oh my God, it is very possible uh, that your miracle has yet to happen uh, because you're very fleshly. Uh. It is very possible that the miracle has yet to rest upon you uh, because you haven't broken the curse, uh, because you haven't broken the flesh, uh, because you haven't allowed the layers of the flesh uh, to fall off of you. Uh. Oh my God, my God, my God, uh, your flesh has got to fall off uh, if the miracle is going to sit in your bosom. Uh. Your flesh has got to fall off uh, if the miracle is going to fall on your lap. Uh. God is able to do it, but the flesh has got to fall on tonight. So I pray that the spirit of discouragement will leave your life in Jesus' mighty name. We're such an era of quick things that we like uh, even our reels to be under one minute. We like it to be under 30 seconds. Uh, Facebook wants the reels uh, to be for 26 seconds. Uh, everybody's rushing to get through. Everybody's rushing for this. Uh, but God says, who is going to spiritually wait on me? Do I still have faith on the earth? Uh, the Bible says that when the Son of Man, when the Christ, the anointed one, returns to the earth, uh, will he still find faith on the earth? Oh, my God. Uh, and faith is not something you rush, baby. No, no, no. Faith is something you tarry for. Uh, are there people who will still spend an hour with God uh, every day of their lives? Uh, no matter how you feel, uh, will you make it up in your mind uh, that every day for the rest of my life, uh, I'm going to spend an hour with God? Uh, that every day for the rest of my life, uh, I'm going to read a chapter of the Word of God? That every day for the rest of my life, uh, I will spend 30 minutes in worship? Oh my God, in my prayer closet, are they those kinds of people who will not be a rushed generation or a generation of rushes who like for everything to be quick and easy? Are they people who are still willing to enter the presence of the Almighty? Do we have people who are still willing to enter the presence of the Almighty God in order to experience breakthrough? Oh my God, let me tell you something. Those who get it too quickly uh, lose it just as quickly as they have gotten it. I'm talking to somebody today. Uh, those oh my katarabashayama who get the miracle too quickly uh, lose it just as quickly. Uh, oh my God, oh my God, uh, as they've gotten it. We're living in an era where it's easier for you to watch a reel that's very short uh, because you only have 60 seconds. Uh, oh my God, uh, to watch the reel. Uh, but you spend hours uh, scrolling on social media. Does that not make sense to you? It does not make any sense. Is that not an agenda of the enemy, my friend? We live in an era where we want everything to be so quick. But God says, I will do a quick thing if you learn to tarry. I'm going to say that again. I will do a quick thing if you learn to tarry. Oh my God. Let me say it again. The Lord says, I'm going to do a quick thing uh, if you learn to stay in my presence, uh, to stay until I break the yoke, uh, to stay until I perform the miracle, uh, to stay uh, until I heal your mind in Jesus' mighty name. Uh. 
The miraculous has never been for people who have rushed God. I'm telling you the very truth. Uh, the miraculous uh, has never been for people who have rushed the presence of God. Uh, the miraculous has always been for people who have gotten on their knees uh, and they tarried and they waited on God. Uh, in fact, I'm going to tell you how you can be introduced to the prophetic. Uh, you're not introduced to the prophetic uh, because you're rushing God. Uh, you are introduced to the prophetic uh, because after you have prayed, uh, you still get on your knees uh, to hear from God. Uh, hearing from God. Uh, it's a real thing. Hearing from God is a real thing. If after you have prayed, you can get on your knees to wait on God, he will open up your eyes to see in the realm of visions. You will hear a voice speaking to you. And if you want God to do it quickly, you have to learn to tarry. God is not slowful. God can do it quicker. But you have to tarry in the presence of the king. You can't rush God. God is not a 60 second reel. He's not a 30 second Facebook reel. No, he's not a Facebook God. No, he's not an Instagram God. No, he's not a 30 second TikTok God. God said, if you tarry in my presence, I will do it quickly. If you tarry in my presence, I will perform it quickly. Oh my God, if you learn to tarry, oh my God. Seeking my face, I will perform it quickly, I will do it swiftly, and I'm gonna do a new thing. I'm gonna do a new thing. If you want something to break in your life, learn to tarry in the presence of God. If you want a yoke to leave your life, learn to tarry in the presence of the Lord. Rebo Shataraba Santa Mande. Because whatever you get too quickly, you will lose just as quickly. While Moses was up in the mountaintop uh, seeking God, uh, the Bible says while he was seeking God, uh, Aaron started a whole other ministry of sin and adultery. And while the people were sinning, uh, Aaron seemed to have been famous, uh, but his fame ended as soon as Moses uh, came back, oh my God, from the mountaintop. Uh, because anything you get too quickly, you're going to lose it just as quickly. But God says, I promise you, I'm a quick God. I can do it in a second. You're can be open in a second your womb can be unlocked but you have to tarry up why do you think oh my god my god my god i want you to listen to this the bible says every single sunday every week elkanah will take his wife hannah to go seek god in the temple yet the miracle never happened the bible says they went weekly in order to go pray but the miracle didn't happen. Oh my God, my God. The miracle didn't happen until Hannah began to seek and to tarry in the presence of God. While she tarried in the presence of God, people thought she was crazy. People thought she lost her mind. Even the prophet thought, Eli the priest said, something is wrong with her. But even he did not understand that she was seeking God. And while she was seeking and tarrying, as I'm asking you to do, the miracle quickly happened. The miracle didn't happen at home for Hannah. The miracle happened while she was seeking God. It can happen happen quickly, but you have to learn to wait on the Lord in the spirit. The flesh can fall off of you. An addiction can fall off of you. Evil can fall off of you. A curse can fall off of you. Sorcery can fall off. Oppression can be exposed and it can fall off of you if you learn to tarry in the presence of the almighty God. So Lord, today we tarry before your throne for another minute, asking God that anything that is a yoke in our lives will break in Jesus' mighty name. Anything that is demonic in our lives will break in Jesus' mighty name. Anything that is satanic, oh God, will break in Jesus' name. Anything that is fleshly, oh God, will break in Jesus' mighty name. God is saying, I'm looking for people who can tarry tonight. Oh my God, my God. I'm looking for people who can tarry tonight. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I'm looking for people who can tarry tonight. God said, if you can tarry in my, in my presence, I will do it quickly. If you can tarry seeking my face, I'll do it quickly. If you want something to leave your life, take the week, take the day to deal with that thing. If you want something to break off of you, take that entire week, take that entire day to deal with it. Oh my
my God, my God, my God. Why do you rush God when you pray? Why do you rush God when you pray? No wonder he can't speak to you because you're rushing him. Oh my God. And then you become frustrated at God and say, well, God, you're not speaking to me. God is telling you I'm not speaking to you because you're not giving me the opportunity to speak to you. Will you tarry? Will you let me remove the flesh from you? Will you let me remove the mental of the flesh? Will you let me remove your flesh so that I can place upon you a mental from the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name? So God says, I'm going to do it quickly. But you have to tarry. Oh my God, let me see a hand if you understand what the Lord is saying to us on tonight. God says, I'm going to do it quickly. But you have to learn to tarry. The miracle can happen just as quickly as you can wake up. But you have to learn to tarry in my presence. You have to learn to seek me. You have to learn to seek me. You see, there is a difference between prayer and seeking. There's a difference between saying in prayer, saying a prayer, and seeking God. God says, I will do it quickly. But you have to tarry. I can perform it very quickly. But you have to tarry in my face. There'll be days where you shouldn't even go out. There are days where you should lock yourself in your room uh, and seek the Lord that day uh, and take that entire day uh, to seek God in prayer, to seek God in fasting. Uh, and you will notice uh, that that entire week uh, will be transformed with miracles, uh, with signs and wonders, uh, that the remainder of that month uh, and the remainder of that day uh, will be transformed with miracles, uh, signs and wonders. Uh, because you took the day uh, to seek God. Uh, because you took the day uh, to tarry in his presence. Uh. God said, don't be like this generation uh, who wants everything to be under 60 seconds. Uh. Can I have someone uh, to give me an hour to seek the Lord? Uh? You said, but pastor, why do you keep mentioning that I need to pray for an hour? Because a believer should at least be able to pray for an hour straight. Why, 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 why? Why should you pray for at least an hour a day? Because Jesus himself on the mountaintop of, of Mount Olives looked at his disciples who fell asleep. And Jesus said, can you precious disciples at least tarry with me for at least an hour? Is it not Jesus who said that to his disciples? He said, can you guys not tarry with me for even one hour? He looked at his disciples who were falling asleep during prayer. And he said, can you not tarry with me for at least an hour? Oh my God, my God. God said, if you can tarry for at least an hour a day, an hour a night, and you can lock your room door and seek my face, I'm going to perform the miracle quickly in Jesus' name. You need to stop envying people you see on social media who have an image of success. I tell you, you need to stop envying them because they will lose it. Many of them will lose it just as quickly as they got it because they didn't get it from a place of tearing. They didn't get it from a place of seeking. They got it from a place of chasing the bag. And there is a difference, honey, between chasing the bag and tearing. Oh my God, my God. There is a difference, oh my God, between rushing and having been processed by God. Am I talking to somebody today? Oh my God who's about to have longevity and destiny. Somebody who's about to have longevity and the prosperity in God. Somebody who's about to have longevity and the ministry for Christ. Somebody who's about to have longevity and their marriage. God says I will give you longevity if you learn to tarry in my face and tarry in my presence in Jesus mighty name. Oh my God, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit on tonight. Even right now, God is already breaking your biggest joke. Even right now, God is canceling the attack. Even right now, God is opposing the oppression. Even right now, God is coming against every attack in your life. Even right now, God is breaking the yoke. Even right now, God is locking up the curse in the dungeon by the blood of Jesus. Oh my God, can you not feel the anointing tonight? Can you not sense, oh my God, the Holy Spirit empowering this moment with his anointing? This is how you get healed. This is how you get delivered. This is how a dark shadow leaves your body. This is how an oppression leaves your home. This is how the yoke is broken by 
tearing in his presence uh, by seeking his face in Jesus mighty name uh, the Lord is speaking to me even now Someone in our midst and you can let me know who you are. You having massive pain on your throat right now. Manko robo shata mandaya. The anointing is going to make the difference up. But the anointing is given to those up who are wanting to tarry, tarry, and tarry in the presence of the king up. God says, uh, I'm a quick God. I will do it quickly. But you have to learn to tarry. Uh. You can't say thank you, Jesus, because you're going to do this miracle when you leave. Uh. No, you have to tarry and seek my face. Uh. The reason you have to tarry is because there's something I've got to show you. The reason you have to tarry is because of things I want to reveal unto you. Oh, my precious Holy Spirit. Oh, Oh my God, you here. You having pain someone on your throat. I want you to let me know who you are if you're not ashamed. You having massive pain on your throat. It's very abnormal. It started about two weeks ago, but it's very abnormal. You've been having that pain and it's been very uncomfortable for you. God has shown me that he wants to heal you on tonight amongst all the people that he's wanting to heal in Jesus' name. God has shown me that he wants to heal you on tonight amongst the people that he's wanting to heal. Healing power of God, healing anointing of the Holy One of Israel. Lord, I pray on tonight that the atmosphere of healing will saturate this moment until everybody in here is fully healed by the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Oh my God, oh my God, in Jesus' mighty name, I'm going to read a scripture for you. A scripture of the week uh, that we've been praying with all week long. I've been spending time uh, with our precious staff praying uh, on the scripture and spending time with intercessors praying on the scripture, spending time uh, even during counseling, praying through the scripture, uh, spending time uh, even with our youth at church, uh, praying the scripture. This has been our scripture of the week uh, and God has been renewing things. My color, my Ptolemy, out of 2 Kings chapter 14, you know, I'm going to read it for you. You don't have to go to it. Second Kings chapter 14. I'm reading verse 26 and 27. The Bible says, the Lord had seen how bitterly everyone in Israel where the slave of free was suffering. There was no one to help them. And since the Lord had not said he will blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash. I'm going to read that again. Verse 27. And since the Lord had not said, oh my God, he will blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, he saved them. I want you to come on with me and say, God didn't say it. I want you to come in and say, God didn't say that. Oh my God, my God. Uh, come in and say, God didn't say that. You can come in a second time and say, God did not plot that. God did not plan that for me. He didn't plot that against me. Oh my God, my God. Uh, the people of God were greatly suffering. Uh, the Bible says they were suffering so badly that they were suffering bitterly. Oh my God. They were suffering so badly that they were suffering bitterly. But this is what I love. Rebo shata ramantalama. Oh my God. Before I can even go a little deeper, make sure you come and God didn't say that. God didn't plan that. God didn't plot that for me. Next time somebody calls you and says, you're going to die with cancer. I need you to text them back. And I need you to call them back and say, listen, my pastor told me to tell you that God did not say, hey, my kalobosha. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The next time they say, you have four days or four months to live, you call on them back and say the word of God says uh, that God didn't say that baby next time they tell you uh, you're going to die of the sickness uh, you're going to have a disease uh, that will cause you to lose your hair or lose your mind uh, I want you to call them back uh, and text them back on your iPhone uh, and say the Bible says uh, that God didn't say that God didn't plan this uh, God did not plan that uh, God didn't plan that plot against me uh, God did not say that in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that the people of Israel were suffering bitterly. And God had seen how bitterly they were suffering. Wait a minute. I love this because God has a habit of seeing Israel. He really has this amazing habit 
of seeing the people of Israel. You say, how do you mean? How do you mean? Remember back in Exodus uh, chapter 4, when God encountered Moses, uh, he came to Moses through a burning bush. The bush was burning, the bush caught on fire, and it seemed to be a strange sight to Moses. Uh, and God called unto Moses, Moses, Moses. And there Moses said, here I am. And when Moses came closer to the bush, God said unto Moses, I have heard my people's cry, and I have seen the suffering, so I've come down to rescue Israel. Oh my God, my God. This is out of Exodus chapter 4. God encounters Moses in this great encounter, and he tells him, I'm sending you back to Egypt to deliver my people because I've seen the suffering and I've heard their pain. And we come all the way to 2 Kings, and the people are suffering again because they're slaves again oh my god in exodus 4 they were slaves to the egyptians and now they're slaves to a neighborhood a neighboring nation i should say and yet the same god who saw them through last time can see them again oh my god my god God has a habit of seeing his people through over Kalamaya. I want to remind somebody who's speaking to their spirit man tonight and they're saying it seems as though these battles are never ending. It seems as though these attacks are never ending. It seems as though I continuously go through the same thing. God told me to tell you, don't you fear a thing. If it feels as though it's never ending, I want you to also know that my rescue for your life uh, is also never ending. Uh, oh my God. Uh, if the enemy is not through attacking you, uh, neither is God through uh, delivering you. Oh my God. Uh, let me say that again. If the enemy is not through attacking you, uh, God wants you to know on tonight uh, that neither is he through uh, delivering you. Oh my God, my God. Uh, that means that for every attack uh, and every plot against your life, uh, there is going to be a deliverance for you. Uh, oh my God. Uh, for every resistance uh, against your destiny, there is going to be a deliverance uh, from the Lord. Uh, because God says to tell you on tonight uh, that he has a habit. Of seeing you through. He has a habit of coming through for you. He has a habit of rescuing you. And I love that he rescued them. The Bible says he rescued them. Because God did not blot out their name. So he could not allow the oppression and the slavery of their enemies. To lead to death. Because the Bible says God did not blot out the name of Israel from the earth. And because God did not blot out the name of Israel from the earth, their enemies could not kill them. Oh my God, my God. The Bible says God had not said that he was blotting out the name of Israel from the earth. So everything that was leading Israel to death could not get to death. I want to remind somebody on today that you're not going to die from this thing. You're not going to commit suicide. The debt is going to be canceled. Because God did not say that this is going to lead you to death. Oh my God. Your enemies call it an attack. But God says no. I call this a process for him to see my promise. Your enemies call this a blood. But God says no. This is a process for her to see my glory. And for her to see my promise. Oh thank you Jesus. God is going to cancel the debt. Don't you become depressed. Over it, God is gonna break the addiction. Don't you let it cause you to commit suicide because God did not blot out their name. No one can bring them to death. This thing is not gonna lead you to die. This thing is not gonna lead you to death. It's not going to kill you. And the reason it's not gonna kill you is because God did not say that this is gonna lead you to death. Oh my God. And God said, if I did not blot out your name from the face of the earth, no man can do it. Not even those who cursed you to your face. Not even those who said you were going to die. Because God didn't blot out your name. Oh my God, my God. God said, because I didn't blot out your name, they can't kill you. When I was seven years old, uh, the witches in my neighborhood said, we're going to have to attack him. We're going to try to bewitch him. We're going to try to attack him his physical throne for and keep him from prophesying because everything he says comes to pass who is he to think that he can speak on behalf of God and, and usually people who come against the Bible and come against the word of God are often witches and wizards 
And so they say to themselves oh, that on that night uh, they were going to take my throat. Uh, and my family and I got to some praying. Uh, we got to some fasting. I was seven years old. I was fasting like a bad boy. Oh my God. That's why you have to train up your children uh, in the way that they need to go. Uh, don't be afraid to talk to your five-year-old about fasting. Uh, don't be afraid to talk to your seven-year-old about seeking God. Uh, why are you afraid to talk to them about stuff like that? When in school, they tell them about all kinds of crazy. YouTube is not afraid to show your children mess. The TV screens are no longer afraid to introduce witchcraft to your children. You better talk to your kids and say the power is found in the name of Jesus. The power is found in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The power is found in God's restoration. So we got to some praying into the sea, seeking God because the witches said that by midnight I wouldn't be able to talk. Let me tell you about a miracle quickly. Our God is a miracle work. Our uh, God is a miracle working God. Uh, they said by midnight this boy ain't going to be able to talk. He will never talk. Uh, he will never utter a word. Uh, he will never prophesy again. Uh, because from the <laughs> my God. Uh, from the from the beginning of the of our driveway, um, uh, from of our street, of our avenue to the ending of our avenue, by that time I had prophesied to everybody. God, I love my telly, man. And it all came to pass. Good God, I was only seven. I remember one time God showed me someone who was speaking to my dad about something, and I didn't know what they were talking about. But I heard a voice. Obviously, at seven years old, I did not know it was the, it was the Holy Spirit. But I do obviously know now. But I heard a voice tell me, go find that man who's speaking to your father and go and tell him that you're going to have your car by Thursday. And so I come up there and tap the man because, you know, when you are a child, children are very courageous and you have to encourage your kids up. To remain courageous. Do not bring their self-esteem down. Don't kill your kid's self-esteem just because somebody killed yours. No, no, no. Restore and renew them. I came next to that man. I interrupted their conversation. I tapped the man on the shoulders. <laughs> I said, hey, sir, you will have your car by Thursday at 10 a.m. He started weeping because there was no way I could have known their conversation. I was across from the room. I couldn't hear nothing, but I heard a man tell me. He pointed at me. Clearly, it was the Lord Jesus who pointed at the man. He said, go tell that man he will have his car by Thursday at 10 a.m. And I went ahead and I told the man, sir, you're going to have your car by Thursday at 10 a.m. And he what? because that was the conversation they were having. And remember, this is a long time ago. This is like early 90s. Uh, this is like 1990 something, like 1995 or something, or four or something, three to five or something. This is a very long time ago. So if you didn't have a car, it was very difficult for you to get to work uh, because everything was far at the time, sort of like in Texas. Uh, and the man wept bitterly. He wept and he thanked God for it. And guess what happened on Thursday? His boss was actually leaving the country to go back to Germany. And his boss was selling the company. And something told his boss to leave his brand new car. Man, to that man oh my god my god out of all the workers he said I didn't know why but I needed to leave you this car and the man left him the boss that is left him the vehicle Manco Torobo the man left him the vehicle literally Thursday at 10 o'clock oh my god my god the man left him the vehicle Thursday at 10 o'clock and I was only 7 at the time but I saw the Lord I saw the angel of the Lord point at the man and he said go tell that man that Thursday at 10 o'clock, uh, he will have this miracle. Oh my God, uh, he will have the vehicle that he needs uh, in order to succeed uh, in his endeavors. Oh my God, my God. Uh, I'm here to remind somebody on today uh, that if the Lord did not remove your name, uh, oh my God, uh, from the face of the earth, uh, no one can curse uh, whom God has blessed. Oh my God, my God. Uh, and God is promising you uh, that he's going to see you through. Uh, oh my God, uh, this thing is not going to lead you to die. Uh, stop it entertaining uh, those suicidal thoughts. Uh, you are not going to die, but you will live uh, to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living God. Uh, in Jesus' name, if you believe that, give me a hallelujah, somebody. My God, my God, my God. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And God comes down for his people and he tells his people, and he says, because I did not blot out their name 
I'm going to rescue them. Oh my God, my God. Listen to this. He says, because I didn't blot out their name, I'm going to rescue them. You know what that means? God is saying, this attack against my people is illegal. Oh my God, my God, my God. He's saying, uh, this attack, uh, mama. oh my God, against my people, it's illegal. Manto Rababa, yes, uh, he better shout hallelujah. Manto Torobo Sayamande, come on here, young Treya. Listen, uh, God comes and he says, uh, they cannot kill Israel. Because I didn't blot out their name. Oh my God, my God. You know, in other words, God is saying that this can't happen to them because God did not perceive this. Anything that happens to you that God did not perceive is illegal in the realm of the spirit. And there are too many people listening to me right now who are going through things that God did not even perceive for you to go through. Oh my God, you're dealing with people that God didn't send your way. You're being oppressed by things that God did not send your way. And he said, if God did not blot out the name of Israel from the face of the earth, it literally means that anyone who tries to kill them is doing it illegally. I'm here to announce to somebody on the day that that thing that's threatening to kill you is illegal. That depression that is threatening to kill you, oh my God, is illegal. And when you pray, you've got to pray and say, God, if you didn't blot my name out from the earth, nobody can blot my name out. Oh my God. And therefore, it makes this attack illegal. And my prayer on tonight in Jesus' mighty name is that God will break every legal attack in your life in Jesus' name. That God will break every curse. Oh my God, that He didn't send your way in Jesus' mighty name. That God will bind every witch and every wizard that He didn't send to your life. You have got to be able to pray these bold prayers. Oh my God, write it down and say bold prayers. You got to learn to pray bold prayers. Bold prayers. You got to say, God, if there's a witch in my life, if there's a wizard in my life, if there's a warlock in my life, cause them to leave my life in Jesus' name. And you will notice that all of those who begin to leave your life will be the witches and the wizards that you ask God to remove from your life. Oh my God. It's time that you begin to pray bold prayers, prayers and say unto the Lord, if there's a plot in my life that the Lord God then sinned against me, break it in Jesus' name. If there's a witch in my life who's attacking an area in my life, cause them to manifest themselves, cause them to come up and to leave out of my life. And you're going to see that prayer be fulfilled and be answered in your life. Oh my God. Because the Lord God said, because I didn't blot out my name, uh, no one could curse my people. Oh my caraba santele beshaya. I'm going to remind you on today uh, that you cannot be cursed. Manko robo sakatalama. I'm going to remind somebody on today uh, that you cannot be cursed. Uh, you will not be cursed. Uh, oh my good God. Uh, because if God didn't allow it, it is illegal in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, second thing I want you to understand tonight before we pray. I want you to realize even when you pray, even when you pray in private, that if something comes from God, the Bible says our good and perfect gift come, our good and perfect gift comes from above. Whenever something comes from God, I want you to listen to this, it always has a good outcome. I'm gonna say it again. Whenever something comes from God, it always has a good outcome. It may not feel good, but the outcome is always great. Oh my God, my God. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. You're riding your stuff, they come from me. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. He's saying that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I know that this is going to end up well for me. Why? Because all good and perfect gift come from above. Oh my God. Paul puts it this way. He says, it is God who gives you the pleasure and the will to do good. Because anything that comes from God always has a good outcome. And Jeremiah the prophet says it like this. For I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, oh my God, and not to harm you, but to give you a future and a hope. In other words, God
God's plan, even when it hurts, is supposed to end up good. It is supposed to finish well. It is supposed to have a great outcome. My God, my God. But if what you're seeing in your life is showing you an outcome that is not good, then the blood didn't come from God. I'm talking to somebody on today. Who am I speaking to on today? If the dreams you're having in the middle of the night do not have a good outcome, understand that it's not God. Because even when God rebukes you, it always ends good. Oh my God, my God. God rebuked Hezekiah, but when Hezekiah repented, there was a good outcome. But if you have been praying, you have been fasting, and you have been repenting, and your dreams always end with you dying, and your dreams always end with an animal devouring you, it is time for you to rise up, because there is an legal attack in your life. Oh my God. I hope that wasn't too much for somebody. When it is God, the outcome always is good. When it is of God, the outcome is always great. The Bible says if a nation who sins against me repents, this is Jeremiah chapter 18, if a nation that sins against me repent, I will switch the verdict around. I will remove judgment and give them justice. But if a nation that is righteous decides to sin against me, I will remove justice and I will place judgment. In other words, whatever God is doing always has a great outcome from me, even if it doesn't feel good. But if what I'm perceiving concerning the future, concerning the morrow, and concerning tonight does not seem to have a good outcome, it is a demonic attack. Oh my God, my God. It is an illegal attack. And when you pray in the presence of God, don't pray your little cute show prayer. Oh, honey, boo boo, Jesus. No, no, no. Get in the presence of God. The Bible says, come boldly before his throne. When you get in the presence of God, you've got to come in boldly before the throne of God and say, God, if there be a witch in my life, oh my God, who's delaying anything in my life and I'm not aware of it, break the curse, break the curse, break the curse. Manko Robo Shayamaya. If there be a curse and a oppression and opposition, a delay, a stronghold, a demonic activity in my life that I'm not aware of. Expose the plot, expose the plot. And guess what God is gonna do? He's going to expose the plot. Woohoo, I love it. He's going to expose the plot. Oh my God, just to show you that it was never his plan. You will be shocked at what God will show you when you begin to pray bold prayers and say, God, if there is a plot against me, expose it. You will be shocked that your own auntie, your own uncle, has been plotting against you the entire time. <laughs> I hope this doesn't make somebody uncomfortable tonight. When you begin to pray bold prayers and you say, God, if there's sorcery in my life, if there was a delay in my life, uh, expose it to me. Manko Rapapalama. You will be surprised at what God shows you through a reality and through a divine encounter and a vision. Oh my God, somebody. And God is reminding somebody on today. It is time for you to pray those bold prayers uh, and say, God, if there was a plot to blow me out of the earth uh, that did not come from your precious plan, uh, great and mighty God, uh, expose it to me. Uh, and the Lord will do just that. He will show you every illegal thing that you've been fighting. My God, my God. He will show you every legal thing you've been fighting. And thirdly, I want to share this with you. God comes and he says, because I haven't blotted out the name of Israel, from the earth, this attack cannot kill them. So therefore, God saved them. What does that mean? It literally means that God justified his people because the plot that they were experiencing was not his plan. If you want your prayer life, to work up and to go in another dimension you've got to learn oh my god to go in the presence of god and say lord justify me from everything that i may be going through that you did not predestine for me oh my good god lord justify me from anything that i may be fighting you better be writing that down justify me from anything that i'm fighting right now that you oh my god didn't send my way justify me from every battle that i'm dealing with that you didn't send my way when you pray in that matter, God is going to save you by exposing everything that you're dealing with that he did not send your way. Whoa. 
Who am I speaking to on tonight? Uh, he said, because the Lord uh, had not blotted the name of Israel from the earth. Uh, he rescued them. He saved them from their very enemies. Uh, when you pray and you say, God, uh, oh my God, justify me from anything that I'm going through that I'm not supposed to be going through. Oh my God. Because many times the, the, the emotional thoughts that you have are not from the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, many times, uh, the spiritual things that you pick up on are not from the Holy Spirit. Many times you pick up on the things uh, that an arrow was literally thrown at you. Oh my good God. Many times you pick up on things uh, that somebody else may be talking concerning you. Many times you pick up on things uh, that are bloodline related, that are generationally related. Uh, so when you come in the presence of God and you say, God, justify me from anything that I may be going through that you did not perceive for me to be going through right now that he will rescue you and he will justify you out of it you can literally pray this text and literally pray this prayer and a miracle will happen in your body you'll start feeling the start the way you were feeling you'll start you'll stop feeling depressed you'll start you'll stop feeling depressive thoughts and you'll stop having troubles in your life I'm telling you the very truth. But you got to come into the presence of God and you say, Lord, justify me from anything that I may be going through now that you did not perceive in your process for me. If it has nothing to do with your process for my deliverance, Lord God, justify me from it. And the Lord will justify you from it because very often when the enemy is attacking you, he's attacking you in order to kill you. The Bible says the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy you. Anything the enemy does has for purpose to kill you. It's not for a good outcome. So when you pray, you say, Lord, justify me from anything that I'm going through. Oh my God, that you didn't send my way. God will save you from death. Oh my God, my God. He's going to save you from death. Oh my God. He's going to save you from death. So tonight, you're going to have to cry out for some justice. And say, dear Jesus, if there was something in my life in my marriage, in my children's lives, in my calling and my anointing. If there be something in my life that I'm going through that you did not allow me to go through, that you didn't send my way, justify me from it. Oh my God. And I'm going to tell you the very honest truth. Until you learn to pray such bold prayers, you may go through everything your enemies want you to go through. I'm telling you the very truth. Oh my good God. You may go through everything your enemies want you to go through if you do not learn to increase your prayer life. I'm telling you the most honest truth here. David said unto God in Psalm 35. At the end of Psalm 35, David is crying out to God. And in prayer, David says, Don't let them see in my life what they wish to see. Oh my God. This is in your Bible in Psalm 35. At the end of Psalm 35, David is crying out to God around verse 23. He says, Lord, don't let them see in my life what they wish to see in my life. He even says, Lord, don't let them say, ha, ha, ha. Just what we wanted. Why is he saying that? Why is he praying this prayer of justification? He's praying this prayer of justification because it is very possible that you go through something that God didn't perceive for you to go through. And this is why it's important for you to go into the presence of God and cry out for justice and say, God, if I'm going through something that I keep thinking, this is just God's will. I'm waiting on God to deliver me. If I'm going through something that you did not perceive, God, break it away from me. Quickly and surely, he will give you a revelation. Quickly and surely, he will justify you from it. So now you're going to pray with me. You're going to cry out to God for justice. You're going to ask the Lord to justify your life. You're going to ask God to heal and to justify your anointing. You're going to ask God to justify your children, to justify your marriage, and to justify your marital status. You're going to ask God to justify your financial status. You're going to ask God to justify your, oh my God, your spiritual life. You're going to ask God to justify you. Because the Bible says that because God did not blot out the name of Israel, he had to rescue them from the hands of their enemies. Enemies. You're going to ask God to rescue you from any hand, hand of poverty, 
hand of oppression, the hand of slavery, and even the hand of addiction. You're going to ask God and say, God, justify me and remove me from anything that I'm going through that you did not plan for my life in Jesus' mighty name. Are you ready to pray that prayer with me? Let me see your hand on tonight. Let me see that prayer with me. Are you ready to ask God to justify you from anything you're going through that he did not perceive for you? Oh my God. Are you ready to cry out to God and say, God, deliver me from anything that I've been calling God Oh my God, all the while it's been the enemy. Are you ready to cry out to God and say, God, justify me from anything that I've been crediting to you? Oh my God. But in reality, it's been of witchcraft. Oh my God. Who am I speaking to today? Are you ready to cry out to God and say, God, justify me from anything that I've been calling waiting on God when in reality I was in a prison cell of witchcraft? Are you ready to cry out to God God and say, God, justify me from a sickness or a condition or an illness that I've been saying it will leave it on its own time, it will run its course and leave it its own time, when in reality I needed to cry out for justice. Oh my God. I need you to cry out for justice right now. In fact, even now, as I'm speaking, you should be able to, you should be able to pray right now. Whether you're praying in Spanish or in French or English or in, in the spirit, I need you to begin to pray and say, God, justify me from anything in my life that you didn't plan for me. Oh my God. If you did not plan my demise, they can't oppress me. Oh my God. If you did not plan for my downfall, they can't bring me down. If you did not plan for me to die, this thing can't touch me. Cancer can't touch me. Justify me from anything that you that sent to me in Jesus' name. Come on, open your mouth and pray with me and let a miracle happen for you tonight. Oh my God. Lord, justify us from anything, oh God, that we may be encountering that you did not send our way in Jesus' name. You justify Israel when you stated that because you did not blot out their name from the world, from the earth, their enemies could not blot them out. That was your justification for your people. Lord, somebody on tonight does not understand what they're going through. They don't even know whether it's a process or it's an attack. They can't even tell if it's you behind this or if it's the enemy. Lord, we pray for justice on tonight. If you did not declare, oh God, their death, justify them from anything that's trying to kill them. And I know, God, that you didn't declare their death. And I know that you did not, oh my God, state that they will die because your plan for their lives has yet to be fully fulfilled. Oh my God, my friend, you have to understand if God's plan for your life has not fully been fulfilled, then it's not your time to die. And if there's a thought that's telling you that you need to die, it is not God. I hope you praying. I hope you praying. I hope you praying. If God's plan for your life has yet to be fulfilled, if the prophecy of your life has yet to be fulfilled, if your calling and your purpose and your destiny have yet to be fulfilled, then you have to understand that anything that's trying to kill you is illegal. The reason God saves them in the first place is because he didn't blot their name out. If God blotted their name out, he would not have saved them. If God did not want you to be here, he would not have allowed you to be on this call on tonight. If God did not want you to be, oh my God, my God, my God, to be blessed, he wouldn't have sent somebody, sent somebody to encourage you. Who am I speaking to on tonight? God wants you to know that it is not his plan for you to die. Because his promise over your life has yet to be fulfilled. His promise over your life has yet to be fulfilled. Oh my God. His anointing over your life has yet to be fulfilled and made manifest. And if what God told you, if what God promised you has yet to be fully fulfilled, then it's not your time to give up. You ought to be praying right now and say, God, if you didn't blow me up from the earth, I know that the sickness is not going to kill me. Take it out of my life. Take it out of my body. Take it out of my heart. Take it out in Jesus.
Jesus' mighty name. Man Robo Shayama. If there be a blood in my life, if there be a wizard or a witch in my life, oh my God, if there be a sin in my life, if there be an oppression in my life, that you did not send my way, remove it in Jesus' name. This is what you ought to be praying when I pray the scripture out. Pray the scripture. The Bible says, because God had not said that he blotted out the name of Israel. He rescued them. When you pray this prayer of justification, God is going to rescue you. When you pray that God justifies you from anything you're going through, that's not God. He'll justify you. And just like that, thoughts of depression are going to leave you. Just like that, thoughts of suicide are going to leave you. Just like that, thoughts of torment are going to leave you. And just like that, thoughts of lust are going to leave you. Just like that, an addiction can fall off of your flesh. I'm telling you the truth. Just like that, a disease can be canceled and it can fully disappear from your life. And just like that, even death can be canceled. When you say, God, if there be something that I'm going through that you did not perceive for me, justify me from that attack. Justify me from that resistance. And justify me from that demonic persistence in Jesus' name. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds to pray that prayer. Pray no matter where you are at home, whether you're in your kitchen or in your room. Walk around and pray this prayer. I say, God, you didn't blot out the name of Israel so they couldn't die. If you didn't blot out my name, remove the spirit of death. Oh my God, I hope you're listening to what I'm saying on tonight. That's how you need to be praying. You say, God, you did not blot out the name of Israel and therefore they could not die. Oh my God. And because you didn't blot out my name, remove the spirit of death from my life in Jesus' name. You did not blot out the name of Israel from the list of prosperity. Oh my God. Oh my God. And because you have not removed my name from your list of favor and anointing of abundance, remove the spirit of lack, remove the spirit of poverty, or remove any oppression, any shame, any embarrassment, or any disease against my life. That's how you should be able to pray. Come on, you got 30 more seconds to truly pray unto the Lord. Lebro Satamayamande. Lord whatever you did not perceive for us God remove it from us in Jesus name if there be a disease a sickness or a condition in somebody's life right now that you did not perceive from them remove it in Jesus mighty name if there be a yoke in someone's life uh, that you did not place in their lives, uh, remove it by the blood of Jesus. Uh. If there be an oppression, an attack, uh, or maybe a confusion in their lives uh, that you did not place in their lives, uh, remove it by the blood of Jesus. Come and pray, I'm waiting on you. Come on, pray, come on, pray. Don't just depend on my prayer. Pray now that you've got the scripture. You got to say, God, if you did not perceive for me to die this year, remove this depression that's trying to lead me to death. That's how you got to pray because that's what the Bible says. Because God did not say, God had not said, God did not perceive that Israel's name was blotted out of the earth. So he rescued them from the enemies who were trying to kill them. You have to say, God, if you did not want me to die this year, then remove anything that's trying to lead me to death. If you did not want me to lose anything this year, then remove anything in my life that's leading me to loss. Oh my my God, I'm speaking to somebody. If you don't want me, oh my God, to be deep in brokenness, then remove anything that's trying to break my heart. I'm looking for believers who know how to intercede and who know how to pray bold prayers, who know how to tarry, because the miracle will happen quickly when you learn to tarry. Oh, hallelujah. Manko robo shakata rabasule mentala. Manko robo skali la brisa katala matoleme. I want you to pray. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds uh, because somebody needs to pray. Your flesh needs to die. You got to break off the flesh now. You got to get into the spirit. You got to break off the flesh now. You got to get into true prayer. You got to say, God, uh, if you didn't perceive for me to lose my mind, uh, then remove these thoughts uh, and save me like you saved Israel uh, by saving my thoughts uh, for me thing that's trying to lead me to death in Jesus mighty name. Oh my God, it can be life changing for the one who will truly pray this prayer.
It can open up mega doors for you this year. It can open up incredible doors for you. It can cause things to just unlock in your life just because you're praying the scriptural prayer. Oh my God, I know you've been praying your cute emotional prayers. But honey, I need you to pray the scripture now. This is spiritual warfare. If you pray the scripture, a miracle is going to happen for you. I, Oh my God, I dare you to pray the scripture and say, God, if you didn't blow my name out of the earth, anything that's trying to blow me out before my time, even if it's a family member, Break it in Jesus' mighty name. And quickly he'll expose all the witches in your bloodline. And quickly he'll expose all the witches in your family. And quickly he will expose all the warlocks in your community. Because the Lord God had not said that Israel was to be blotted out of the earth. The Lord heard their suffering and their bitter uh, cries. And he saved them. My prayer on tonight in Jesus' name is that the Lord will save a person on tonight, an individual on tonight, who's going through something that God does not perceive and that God did not consent to in Jesus' name. You will not die, oh my God, as a victim to your enemies. You will not die as a victim of your bloodline in Jesus' name. You will not die as a victim of of your ex. You will not die as a victim of abuse. The devil is a liar in Jesus name. You will not die as a victim of poverty. No, no, no. By the blood of Jesus, we cancel that tonight. You will not die as another victim of depression. We cancel that in Jesus name. You will not die as a victim of suicidal thoughts. We cancel that by the blood of Jesus. You will not die as a victim. Oh my God. Oh my God of a generational curse or a bloodline foolish witchcraft you will not die as a victim of sorcery you will not die as a victim of opposition you will not die as a victim of voodoo you will not die as a victim oh my god of a family member's witchcraft you are not their property you belong to Jesus for you are not born of natural descent but you are now called sons of the most high in Jesus mighty name Manto robo shatamaya. Pray, pray, pray. Say, God, if there's a plan in my life uh, that's trying to blot me out, uh, but you did not say that I was to be blotted out, remove it from me in Jesus' name. Uh. If you did not remove my name from the list uh, of the living on the earth, uh, anything trying to lead me to death, uh, remove it from me in Jesus' name. Uh. Anything that's trying to lead me to suicide, remove it in Jesus' name. Uh. If you did not want me to be poor, anything that's trying to accumulate itself in my life uh, as debt, as poverty, as lack, uh, as oppression, break it, break it, break it, break it uh, in Jesus' mighty name. Uh. This is how you are a prayer and you're going to see debt fall off. Uh. You're going to see $100,000 fall off of your credit. You're going to see debt being cancelled in your life. But you got to pray. God said I will perform the miracle quickly if you learn to tarry. Don't be like this quick generation that wants everything to be under 60 seconds. God said I dare you to give me 60 minutes and I will perform that miracle quickly in your life. Come on pray. Pray. Pray with me. I'll give you another minute. I'll give you another minute because you need to pray in this manner. You ought to be able to touch yourself and say, God, if this condition is not what you want for my life, uh, break it in Jesus' name. Uh. Oh my God, uh, if you don't want me to die this year, then break every suicidal thoughts uh, in Jesus' name. Uh. If you don't want me, oh God, to die, uh, remove every depression that's trying to lead me to death uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh. If you didn't blot my name out, uh, oh my God, out of the, uh, out of the name uh, and out of the list of the living, uh, remove the spirit of depression. You have to say, God, if you came to give me life and life more abundantly, then remove from my life anything that is suffocating my ability to live. Because your Bible says that because you did not blot out the name of Israel from the earth, you rescued them. You have to say, God, you came to give me life and life more abundantly. Anything that's keeping me from living, anything that's making me uh, go in cycles and live in a, on a cycle and live in circles and go in, cir go in circles, uh, go in circles, anything that's causing me, oh God, to be a slave to the system, to be a slave to debt, to be a slave to bills, uh, or to be a slave to my past, uh, to be a slave to my ex. Uh, that's how you got to pray. You have to pray precise prayers. Uh, God.
God loves precision. Your prayers have to be bold and precise and scriptural. That's where the miracle is found. That is where the miracle is found. That is where the miracle is found, friends. Listen, I'm going to give you 20 more seconds. Come on, pray. Say, Lord, if you did not blot my name out of the list of the living, oh God, remove anything in my life that's trying to lead me to death. Remove anything in my life that's trying to lead me to suicide. Remove anything in my life that's trying to lead me to discouragement. Remove anything in my life that's trying to lead me to lack or to poverty or to delay or to witchcraft. Remove it by the blood and expose the witch. Remove it by the blood. Expose the warlock. Remove it by the blood and expose the wizard in Jesus' name. Your Bible says that the Lord God had not said that the name of Israel was to be removed from the earth, so he rescued them. If God did not plan it, that plot cannot prosper in Jesus' mighty name. If God did not plan it, you must be rescued from that plot in Jesus' name. So one last prayer, you're going to ask God again. You're going to say, God, if 2022 is still a year for me to be set free, if 2022 has still, still has compassion and mercy that I've yet to see, remove anything in my life that's keeping me from seeing your compassion, that's keeping me from seeing your covenant with me and that's keeping me from seeing your abundance in my life in Jesus mighty name pray for the remainder of this year pray for 2023 God has shown me so much but I'm not so sure tonight that I need to even share any of that say God whatever my life is dealing with that you did not perceive from me remove it in Jesus mighty name Manto Rapa Pazi, Manta Rapa Pashi Ketelime Salamandaya, Manko Ropo Zalama. Remove it if you did not perceive it from me, break it. Break it by the neck if you didn't perceive it from me, God. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody give me an amen, somebody. My God, my God, my God. Give me an amen like you mean business on tonight. Uh. Give me an amen like you mean business on tonight in Jesus' mighty name, uh. I'm allowed to share one thing tonight that the Lord has shown me concerning the next week. That means the next one, two, three, or seven days. God has shown me that there are a few people who are watching me who are literally, and I'm so glad this is all on a nice conversation because you're going to come back to this conversation and see exactly what God said. God has shown me over the next week. So basically, the last week of this month that I believe we've basically walked into. God has shown me that as you enter this new month, you're entering this new month with a lot of financial oppression falling off of you in Jesus' name. And I believe that is the one thing I'm allowed to share because it's pretty generational, uh, pretty general. It's pretty general. God has shown me that over the next week, from this day until this time next week, a lot of things that you consider to be oppression are going to fall off of you by the blood of the Lamb of God in Jesus' name. That's what God is showing me on tonight. So God, I decree today and I declare that for everyone who's listening on tonight, let there be light in the financial arena. Let every oppression fall off of them in Jesus' name. Someone, you're, having, you're not having this now, but you had it even before you logged in. You were having a panic attack before you logged in. And you have those a lot. Even now as I'm speaking, your, your right foot, I'm not going to say it's numb, but something happens with your right leg, not your foot, I'm sorry. Something happens with your right leg. You get panic attacks and something always happens in your right leg and the right side of your body on your right leg a lot. Even now you're like shaking it uncontrollably on the right of your leg is what the Lord is showing me. And I know that I know that I know that I saw that very correctly that it was on the right and not on the left. God has shown me too that there was a demonic oppression against you that he broke off of you tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -mm 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 -mm. My God, you're in this place. So Lord, I decree that if I be a true man of God over these next seven days, every oppression that came against your people in their finances falls off in Jesus' mighty name. Every yoke that came against your people falls off of their life. It leaves their lives in Jesus' mighty name. Someone even your neck, you have pain on the neck, on the back of the neck. It's on the back of your neck that left you too in Jesus' mighty name. Manko rapa pazute lebe. Thank you, Jesus the Christ. So now we're going to seal what God is doing in our midst. 
We're going to seal tonight with a special seed unto the Father on tonight. From the depth of your heart, I want you to do the seed and say, Lord, if it was not planned by you, the plan can't prosper in Jesus' name. I need you to continue to pray the scripture and I need you to sow according to the scripture because if you sow according to the scripture, you're going to see exactly what I've been talking about. We've seen so many financial blessings come to people that even they themselves could not perceive. And I am a firm believer that we don't serve a God who only heals your headache and not your pocket. I'm a firm believer. Why do I believe it? Because I've seen God in that manner. I've seen the same God who heals the brokenhearted, heal their finances as well. Miraculously. I, I, and I'm saying like miraculously in Jesus' mighty name. And this is why it's so important to give unto the Lord. Because when you give unto God, you can experience miracles, like authentic miracles. And I mean, couldn't walk miracles, couldn't breathe miracles, couldn't get out of your wheelchair type of miracles. When COVID was at its prime in 2020, in January, February, and March of 2020, the Lord graced us to pray for four people on FaceTime, who were dying from COVID at its peak. One on a ventilator. All of them to this very day, alive and well. Alive and well. It did not touch them a bit after we prayed for them. One of them left the hospital literally six to seven days after we prayed. All of them left the hospital that exact week by the grace of the Lord. There's nothing God can do. There's nothing God cannot do. This is why it's important for you to sow on tonight and especially to sow on an authentic ground such as this one. This is such a miraculous ground. I want you to sow concerning the scripture and say, dear God, if there be anything in my life that you did not plan, let it be removed from me in Jesus' mighty name. If I'm going through something emotionally, mentally, spiritually, maritally, that you did not perceive from me, expose it to me. Remove it by the blood of Jesus. And this is exactly what he's going to do for all of us who are sowing on tonight by the grace of the Lord. For all of us who are sowing on tonight, this is what God is going to do. We're all going to sow a $100 seed onto the Lord on tonight. CCC, if you can help me place the website on there. We're going to mycccfamily.org. Very simple. That is three different C's. My CCC family. Very easy. You don't have to Google how to spell it. <laughs> Because I know a lot of my be believers love to Google how to spell certain things that they don't know how to spell. Shame on you. This one is simple. You don't have to Google it. You can just say myccfamily.org and it'll lead you directly to the website. And you say, God, this is my seed on tonight. I'm sealing the deal. That if there be something against my finances that I don't perceive to be there, break it tonight, expose it on tonight in Jesus' name. For some of us, God is asking us to do a completely different amount. And that's totally okay. Do that completely different amount that the Holy Spirit is asking you. If God is telling you, I want you to sow a $200 seed tonight. I want you to sow a $300 seed tonight. Whatever he's telling you, say, God, I'm going to obey you. Because if there be something in my life, in my finances, and you're calling for me that I've been perceiving to just be life. When in reality, it was an attack. Remove it from me by the blood of Jesus. My God, my God, take it away. Break it from me. Break it, suffocate it away from me because you did not perceive for me to die. And if you didn't say that I am to die, don't let them kill me in Jesus' name. If you did not say that I am to die, do not let them take my life in Jesus' mighty name. That's how you are to be praying. That's exactly how believers have to be praying. You hear me and stuff in Jesus' mighty name. So we're going to my CCC. Very simple. Three different C's are my CCC family.org. Click on the gift tab. And I want you to send the church even a text message or an email letting us know what you want us to be praying for concerning this. Because I, I come on here for testimonies. I don't come on here to have a good time. I come on here for a testimony. I come on here so that someone's life can be transformed. So that the moment we spend together in the presence of the Lord can matter. You understand? So Because I know a lot of people, they just waste time. When they, when, when they pray because it's just a bunch of distraction and fleshly matters. And I know that I didn't come on here for that. And I know for a fact that you didn't come on here for that. We came to seek the Lord to pray, to get an instruction on how to walk into what he has in mind for us. And so this is what he wants you to do tonight. 
my CCC family that organ, you say, God, heal my finances. If there be something in my life that you didn't perceive from me at all, remove it, remove it, remove it from me in Jesus' name. One last thing I'm going to share with you. The Lord is showing me, he literally just showed me this just now. Someone you, you, you have to have a tumor somewhere in your body. You have to have a tumor somewhere in your body. The Lord is showing me that he wants to heal you from that. Whatever caused that, he wants to heal you from it. You can email the church or you can let me know right here that it's you because I know you're watching me by the grace of God because it passed by me very clearly. You have to, have, I actually saw the word tumor being written. You have to have a tumor somewhere and God is healing you from that thing in Jesus' mighty name. God is cleansing you from it by the blood of the Lamb. And I want God in Jesus' name to cut that thing off with his sword in Jesus' name. The word says that the, the word of God is living and active. It is sharper than a double-edged sword. It pierces through joint and marrow. My God, oh my God. And it gives us understanding. So I want the sword of the Lord to cut that thing from you. To cut any cancer from you. To cut any tumor from you. And to cut any attack that can try to come against you by the power of the sword of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Especially if you have a great need. If you are expecting a great door to open for you, you might want to sow unto the Lord because that is how great open doors are opened. If you're saying, God, I need debt to be canceled. I'm worried. I'm exhausted. I don't see an outcome for this. This is your moment. This is literally your opportunity to say, God, I'm going to give in Jesus mighty name and I'm going to seal the deal because I've done all that I could and still the debt didn't come down. But I'm telling you here at this church of covenant, miracles happen like crazy. God unlocks wombs like nobody's business. <laughs> Miracle babies fly open. I'm telling you, finances increase like no one's business. I'm telling you the truth. God brings clientele to our members who are in business and enterprises like they have never seen before in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm telling you the truth, open doors upon open doors, especially financially, God cancels debt in this church because our God is a God who cancels anything he didn't place in your life in Jesus' name. So if God did not blot out your name from the list of the living, from the list of the peaceful, because God gives his beloved rest and he gives us peace which surpasses all understanding. If God did not remove your name from that list, I pray today in Jesus' name that anyone and anything that is trying to remove your name from that list be gone from your life in Jesus' name. If they're threatening your destiny spiritually, may God cut them off of you in Jesus' name. Oh my God, my God, my God. Somebody say, cut them off in Jesus' name. Give me a scissor. Give me some scissors and then cut them off in Jesus' mighty name. If there be anyone or anything in my life that is spiritually fighting God, my calling, spiritually fighting God, my efficiency, you hear what I'm saying? If there be someone who's spiritually fighting your efficiency, Lord, in Jesus' name, cut them off. Manco brata la manta. If there be someone or something in my life spiritually who's fighting my destiny and yet calls themselves my friend, fighting my destiny, yet calls themselves my family member, fighting my destiny, yet calls themselves a member of my community, no matter where you live, you say, God, cut them off by the blood of the Lamb of God. Cut them off by the blood of Jesus. Cut that yoke. Cut that cord. Cut the cord by the blood of the Lamb in Jesus' mighty name. That's how your prayers must be. God, it doesn't even matter anymore who they are, where they are. Cut the cord in Jesus' mighty name. So as you give on tonight, ask God to cut the cord. Give as the Lord is telling you and for many of us on tonight, it has to be more. And I know that there's a few of us on tonight who have already said to themselves in their heart, I'm going to sow on tonight because I need something to be cut off my life. If there be something that's plotted against me financially that needs to go, I'm giving my finances to God so that it can go away. He said, because God had not said that he blotted the name of Israel from the earth, their enemies could not kill them. Isn't that powerful? If God did not blot your name from the earth, they can't kill you in Jesus' mighty name. Oh my God, my God. So we're going to mycccfamily.org. Click on the gift tab and say, Lord, if you did not plan for this in my life, 
Cut it off of me in Jesus' name. If the sickness is not from you, cut it off in Jesus' mighty name. And he will tell you the person who tried to do voodoo against you. Good God Almighty, I can't tell you how many wizards and witches have been exposed to me. It will blow your mind. They can never hide. You can't hide as a wizard. You can't hide as a witch. It, it's impossible to hide because the Lord is the light of the world. Oh my God, I love the Lord. So we're going to give by going to my CCC family.org and say, God, I'm going to do it from the depth of my heart. I'm going to do this from the depth of me. If on Sunday you didn't get the chance to do your 222, do it right now by the grace of God and say, God, this is still my year of deliverance. If there be something that's trying to blow me out, literally, you have to pray in that manner and you have to sow into that manner. You literally have to purposely pray in that manner. God, you did not block my name out of the list of the living. If there's depression is trying to lead me to death, it's got to be cut off. And depression doesn't come from God anyway, because God gives you a sound mind. And I pray that you'll be able to go back to the beginning of this video and watch the entire thing and pray every point that was mentioned in Jesus' name. We're going by, by giving to myccfamily.org. And after you do that, please send in an important request. Send it in because it will be prayed for daily. Like daily, the same prayer is prayed for until the miracle happens. I'm telling you the truth. Daily, we pray for it until the miracle happens. So send it in. If it's important to you, it is important to God. You understand? If it, if it matters to you, it matters to God. Send in that request, that info at myccfamily.org. You say, Father, this is what I'm praying for. Heavenly Father, this is my prayer request that I'm sending to Covenant Christian Church. Allow them to intercede on my behalf and we'll do just that. And the more we pray for it, the more grace falls on that request. If you're having a hard time walking, you're in crutches, send us the prayer request because our God is, a, is an incredibly miraculous God. We want that request. You said, I haven't been able to walk for three years. I've been on this crutches. Send us the request. We'll lay hands on the request and you're going to walk before this year is over in Jesus' name. If you have surmounting debt that's trying to suffocate you, send the request in. We'll pray for you because honestly, we want the testimony. <laughs> I love it. We want to pray for us and that God can perform a miracle for you. But on tonight, we're going to give at myccfamily.org. And you say, God, whatever you did not plan, break the plot against my life. And just as you give to God, you, your seed is financial. But to God, your seed is a sacrifice. He smells the seed. And when he smells the seed that pleases him, because it was a sacrifice to your heart, he has no other choice but to release the miracle to you. I'm telling you the truth. When it pleases God, it pleases God because it is a sacrifice from your heart. So tonight, break the curse. Choose to break the curse. Choose to break it. If God is telling you do a thousand, do it. Choose to break the curse. What do you have to lose except for everything that you have to gain under such a true and anointing ground. Choose to break the curse. Say, God, I'm through. Enough is enough. I'm going to break this yoke. My sacrifice is worth it. I'm going to break this thing. I don't want to go another night with this. I don't want to go another sleepless night with this, God. Here's my prayer request. And here's my serious and authentic seed. I'm not delaying this no more, God. I'm going to put a seed on the ground. And I'm going to let my giving and my seeds speak for me. The Bible says so in the morning, so in the afternoon, so in the evening. Because you do not know which one of your seeds will speak on your behalf. And the Bible says as a man sows, that which he will reap according to his harvest. You have no other choice but to break the yoke. Because if you don't break the yoke, you'll be broken by the yoke. So tonight, I encourage you, break the yoke in Jesus' name. And the curse in Jesus' mighty name. Deal with it once and for all. And take your entire day tomorrow. Lock yourself up if you're going to be, if you're going to be one of those who will be home all day. Lock yourself up. Don't watch Hulu. Don't watch demonic Netflix. Lock up the door and seek the Lord. And put a seed on it and see if my God that I serve is not going to reward you righteously. He's not a man that he shall lie. God has never lied to me. And I know that he never will because a lie can't come out of the mouth of God because he is holy. He's righteous and he is true. 
in Jesus' name. So we're going to myccfamily.org. I'm gonna pray for you that the Lord God will heal you in ways you've never been healed before, that he will prosper you in ways you never even thought were possible, that if there's an amount in your heart that you want God to do for you, that he will quadruple the amount just to show you that he's a covenant God. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray in Jesus' mighty name, if I be a man of God, if I be in covenant with you, and if you be in covenant with me, quadruple their giving in Jesus' mighty name. Release a flow of abundance over their lives like they've never seen before in Jesus' name. Release a harvest over every person watching on tonight, especially those of us who have listened and stayed until the end because we have listened and we have stayed until the end. May we have something that those who did not stay could not get from you in Jesus' mighty name because we have listened until the end. Let this benediction Find us in ways that we have never seen before. Let this favor find us in dimensions that no possible person, even in our families, could have possibly gotten in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for a multiplication so big in their lives that they will not have room enough to receive it in Jesus' name. Give them back their calling, God. Give them back their opportunities, God. Give them back their star, oh God. Give them back their anointing and give them back in Jesus' name their financial destiny. I bind any financial pressure against anyone, God, tonight by the blood of Jesus. Uh, as I leave this blessing with your people, those who have stayed until the end, those who are still listening even now, God, as, oh God, they go home with this blessing on today, let favor find every area of their lives on tonight. Uh, that even in the middle of the night, oh God, while a spirit of torment wants to roam around, uh, may that spirit not touch their homes. And if it dares to, may it meet the blood of Jesus and the angel of the Lord ready to strike them away. Because the Bible says that the angel of the Lord uh, pursues my enemies uh, in a dark and a slippery path. Uh, and suddenly they will be struck down. So Lord, in Jesus' name, anything that could try to come against their household, their family, God, let the angel of the Lord strike it away from them in Jesus' name. May a blessing that is greater than any curses of the world follow them in Jesus name may a blessing that can never be removed that can never be broken follow them in Jesus mighty name I leave a blessing with you that no man will take away from you I decree that you are blessed and not cursed in Jesus name and that anything in your life that was a plot that God did not plan I decree from this day forward that God will remove that misfortune that God will remove that oppression that God will remove that curse that God will remove that disease that God will Will remove that condition and that the Lord God will remove that spirit of opposition against your life uh, that God will remove anything that was limiting your life uh, causing you uh, to question the goodness of the Lord uh, causing you to question your own destiny and causing you to question your own hard work uh, I remove that thing right now by the blood of Jesus uh, and because you have stayed till the end uh, may you never run dry in Jesus name uh, may the favor that I've left with you today in the name of the Lord Jesus uh, also stay with stay with you uh, until the end uh, this I declare in Jesus name somebody give me an amen uh, I felt fire coming out of my hands while I was praying there. And I know that usually the hands represents the works of your hands. And I believe tonight, right now, that with the fire that I felt leave out of my hands, it has influenced your hands in Jesus' mighty name. God has blessed the works of your hands. Anything you will touch shall be blessed. In fact, I'm going to tell you this. Anything you touched before is going to be blessed. Because you stayed with me until the end. The blessing prayer that I've left with you, it will follow you until the end. It will follow your children until the end. Oh my God, my God. Because you were not intimidated by, 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 by an announcement to give. May God bless you with blessings that will intimidate your enemies in Jesus' name. Good God, I'm speaking to somebody. I'm going to say that again. Because you weren't intimidated and you said, I'm going to stay till the end. May God's favor follow you until the end. In other words, this favor that I leave with you today has no expiration date in Jesus' name. Oh my God, you better take this blessing seriously, man. The Bible says that God gives you stability. But when God wants to prosper you, he will send an authentic child, an authentic servant, and an authentic prophet in your life. It means that this favor that I've left with you today will never run dry. This favor that I've left with you today will never expire in Jesus' name. Until the day of Jesus Christ, 
the blessing that I've left upon you and your household will find you forever in Jesus' name. It will never leave you. It will be a blessing that will cling to you and no one will be able to curse you and no one will be able to delay you. In Jesus' name, go with this favor. Go with this abundance in Jesus' name. We're going to mycccfamily.org. There, I want you to say, God, I'm gonna sow this $100 seed. I'm going to sacrifice and put this $200 seed on the ground. In Jesus' name. I love you so much, but Jesus Christ loves you more. More than anyone has ever loved you. More than anyone loves you now. And more than anyone will ever, ever love you. Have a blessed night. I wish I could hug you, but I cannot wait to see you in one more week and to hug on you like I used to do. Love you and see you very soon, CCC. Have a blessed evening. And most importantly, a prosperous, miracle-filled week because the blessing is now on you. Bye-bye for now.